morning, everybody. We want you to get up out of your seats this morning. Amen. Do you know that God has a great name and he wants us to hear us call it out every morning? Okay? So that's what we're going to do this morning. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name, your great name, King Jesus, no other name, King Jesus, none stronger, we can call on you, things change, yes, we can call on your name, King Jesus, no other name, King Jesus, none stronger, we can call on Yes, we can call on your name. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. We love to let me hear you. Call your name. It's something. We cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name, your great name, King Jesus, no other name, King Jesus, none stronger, we can call on you, things change as we can call on your name, King Jesus, no other name. None stronger, we can call on you. Things change, yes, we can call on your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. If you know it, power in your name. Sing it with us. There is power in the name of Jesus. Say his name, power in your name. There is power in the name of Jesus, power in your name. One more time. There is power in the name of Jesus, power in your name. Things change, things change when I call you Jesus. Things change when we call your name. Things change when we call you Jesus. Things change when we call your name. I'm free when I call you, Jesus. I'm free when I call your name. I'm free when I call you, Jesus. I'm free when I call your name. 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 Demons tremble when I call you. Stronger when I call you, when I call your name. I am healed when I call you, when I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call you, when I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call you, when I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call you, when I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call you, when I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call you, when I call your name. When I call your name, 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 when I call your name. Yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands with us right now, wherever you are. If you know that we serve a good God, a great God, a great God, a God who knows your name, who knows everything about you, yes, Jesus. 
So I want you to take this time right now to be thankful. Thank you. Tell God thank you. Thank you, God. As he walks with you and as he talks with you, tell God thank you. God, you know me. Knows us. Thank you, God. So I trust you with my life. Thank you. Yeah. Oh! 
Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, God. Praise God. Praise God. We want you all to know that God is good. And that God cares. And know that he knows your name through every obstacle. thankful that God knows our name. Thankful that God knows me personally. He knows you personally. and He knows everything that you're dealing with mentally. The things you won't tell your family and your friends. Uh, the things that are deep inside your heart that are weighing heavy on your spirit. God says, I know your name and I'm holding your hand and I'm walking with you and I'm talking you through these things. So I am just appreciative of what the song says, and, and I'm thankful on this morning of, of what the, the young ladies uh, sung about. God the Father knows who you are, and in the midst of your struggle, and in the midst of everything that you're dealing with, he says, I want to remind you that I know who you are, I know where you are, I know where you're going, and I'm going to continue to provide. My plan doesn't stop here. I know we're in the midst of a pandemic. We're in the midst of, uh, of a nation that is disregarding the African-American community and in, 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 in the midst of a nation where police brutality is, is often ignored, especially the police brutality against African-Americans, people who look like me. But God is saying, I know in this situation that you're all going through, but I know who you are, I know where you are, and it does not end here. I'm holding your hand, and I'm going to get you through until the end. Just tell somebody wherever you are, in your homes, in your apartments, that God is not finished. The war is not over, but God is not done. There's still more to do, and the fact that we are alive and breathing on this morning means that God has a plan for you, and there is nothing that the police or the system can do to stop what God has for you and your family in your lives. Amen. So I'm just thankful for that song. Um, I will not be in front of you long. I know today is Father's Day and many of you have plans. So I don't want to get in the way of your plans. Uh, but I do just want to give a brief shout out to all the fathers who are watching. Uh, the world needs you. Your families need you. You are the leaders of our family. Uh, you hold the wisdom. You hold the identity of your families and and you hold the ability to set forth at the platform that your sons and daughters and generations after you will be able to stand on to be able to reach success. So fathers, we thank you and I just uh, want to give a special shout out to my father, Pastor Maness, who's the leader of this house. Uh, a lot of people may say I look more like my mother, but he can't deny me either. Uh, we love the same things. We talk about the same things. We care about the same things. We get uh, up here behind this podium and move the same way. We have the same mannerisms, so he can't deny me. But I'm thankful to my father just for being a good example and setting the tone of, of what it looks like to be a man uh, and what it looks like to be an African-American man and, and what it means to provide for your family and to work and to uh, have ambition and to go after what you want. So I'm thankful. Uh, that God has given me such a wonderful father. And, and I just want to talk today briefly about the importance of fathers. I may have touched on it already, but fathers carry our identity. You know, in the old days, a lot of times, if people didn't know who the son or who the child was, the first thing they did was try to remember who the father is. As an example, if you, your father was a mechanic, then most likely people would understand that when you grow up, you would be a mechanic. If your father was a preacher, then most likely back in the day, people would understand that the son is going to be a preacher. So the father carries this identity. And who the father is and what he's accomplished is kind of projected onto his children, especially his son. So the father carries the identity of the family. It was my father who told me what it meant to be a Maness man. My identity came first from my father. Fathers carry knowledge. They carry 
wisdom. It was my father who taught me how to mow the grass, who taught me how to shave, how to brush my teeth, how to carry myself in public, and, and at first how to dress. I dress myself now, but when it came to trying to look smooth and suave, it was my father who taught me those things and who gave me the knowledge and the wisdom to navigate the murky waters of this world that we live in. That knowledge and that wisdom came from the Father. And, and, and thirdly, the Father provides provision. The Father usually, and I say usually, uh, because it's not just the Father that provides, but typically, you know, in, in, in our customs and ideals in America, the Father is the provider of the household. They bring in the money. They, they make sure that the family has somewhere to stay. They make sure that the family has something to eat. So a father brings provision. That's why fatherhood is important. And I want to look at the book of Genesis so that we can learn more about our ultimate father, our heavenly father, and that is God. So Genesis chapter 1, starting at verse 24. I'm reading in the ESV and God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw it was good. Verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Verse 28, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Verse 29, and God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with its seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. Verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Join me in a word of prayer. God, I'm thankful for the reading of your word. I'm thankful for what you're getting ready to say through me on this day. Increase, God, as I, decrease, as I decrease. Don't let me say anything, God, if it does not give you the glory. Uh, touch everyone who's viewing this live stream to be receptive to your word and to what you have to say. God, let your word be sharp. God, let it convict us, but also, God, let it console us. God, let your word consume us and motivate us, God, to continue living right, to continue living for you, and to continue pushing forward. So, God, I ask again that you speak through me and that you would touch the hearts and the minds of everyone listening. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So, there are three or four things that I believe we need to understand about our identity. As alluded to uh, before praying and reading the word, our identity really comes from our Father. And I think in today's time, uh, we can clearly see that sometimes the Father not being in the household uh, creates uh, a, a deficit for that family. Uh, sometimes fatherless households struggle more uh, with discipline. Fatherless households sometimes struggle more uh, with finances, and I think the absence of father sometimes messes with the identity of the family, and that in turn keeps them from starting off on the right foot. Now, I'm not saying that every fatherless family uh, starts off on the wrong foot and they just can't get it together, because we've seen it time and time again. Fatherless families and generations of kids uh, who, who did not have fathers but are doing great and excellent things in the world. But I'd like to make a, a, a comment and, and more of an opinion is just that when you have the father there and you have the identity being passed down to you from the father, then your success and your outlook on life is much different in the beginning. Number one, 
Your identity as a child of God is dominion and power. You have the power that it takes to change your community. You have the power that it takes to change your situation. You have the power that it takes to uh, accomplish what you think is impossible. It's already in you, and it began in the creation of the world in Genesis. You have dominion, and you have power. When you look at verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1, it says that God made, a, made us after his own likeness and let them have dominion over the sea, over the heavens, the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all of the earth. So if you have power, then why is it that some of us refrain from going after the things that we want? Why is it that some of us allow uh, negative things to continue to happen in our lives? Why is it that some of us don't stand up for ourselves? I think it's because we don't recognize that God already has given us dominion and has given us power over everything in the world. When you have an understanding of the power that you have living inside of you, then you move with a different kind of confidence. Then you move with a different kind of swagger because you recognize there's nothing the devil can throw at your way. There is nothing that someone can say to you that's going to stop you from accomplishing the dreams that you have, the goals that you have set for yourself. Because you understand the power that you have in you. And sometimes I'm, I'm worried that it takes events, tragic events, to make us realize how powerful we are. When I think about all the great things that are now happening in society because of the death of George Floyd, it, it's bittersweet. It's great because, wow, people of all colors and all over the world are marching together. People are getting policies changed. People are removing uh, things in history that didn't represent equality. This stuff is now happening as a result of a spark, and that spark was something negative for our community. But I want you to understand that, y'all, we've already, we've always had this power. We are already given dominion and power over sickness, dominion and power over the devil, over any traps that he set before you, dominion and power over any type of man-built system that is meant to keep us down. We have dominion and power already. And I want you to understand that moving forward uh, in, in, in a couple of months or maybe even a year or some change when the pandemic dies down and the protesting dies down, I don't want to forget that God has already given you dominion over everything in the earth. Everything, even the powers that we can't see, the powers in the spiritual world that are working against us every day, you have power in you over those things. So I want you to remember when you were thinking about applying for a job that you think you can't get, you have dominion and power over everything in the earth. It said so in the first chapter of the Bible. We have dominion and power over everything. This is a part of your identity. Another part of your identity is resources. It takes money uh, to live. You have to have money to, to pay for your mortgage or to pay for rent. You have to have money to pay for food. You have to have money to pay for transportation. Your father in Genesis chapter 1, when he created you, in your identity, he put the resources that you will need. Verse 29, it says, Behold, and this is God speaking, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. When God has called us to do something, God has given you a plan, which he has. It says in the Bible that God knew you before you were in the womb, and he has a plan for you. Just know that God also gave you the resources. So when it comes to trying to figure out, well, how am I going to get the support 
in order to run for this position or how am I going to get the support in order to start this business? I don't have money or how am I going to get the support in order to go to school because I don't have scholarship funds and, and my parents aren't, aren't necessarily equipped with the resources. Understand that you must go after what you want. You must go after what God has set you to go after because in the beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, God is saying, I have given you the resources. We should not worry in Matthew chapter 6, it talks all the time, and that's one of my favorite chapters of the Bible, about how we should not worry what we're going to eat or what we're going to drink. Focus on the journey. Focus on the relationship. Focus on who you are as a child of God and he being your father. Focus on the plan that he has set before you. Focus on continuing to work on your skill set, continuing to build yourself. The resources will be there. God said so at the beginning of the Bible. In your identity, there are resources, and as a result of the resources, we have life. And I want to take a moment and just, uh, as an aside, say that the resources aren't just for you. Our resources as children of God are, are gifts. Our resources are our general vibes that we give off. Because if we have a spiritual connection with God, then our vibes are nothing but positive, nothing but peace, nothing but uh, loving. We are the light that's, that's in the world. We are the salt of the world. So we ourselves are a resource. And I always say this, but sometimes the only thing that people are going to see or understand about God initially is your actions, how you carry yourself, how you handle yourself when people talk trash about you, or when people do you wrong in public. You yourself are a resource. So make sure that you are cognizant when you go out in public of how you treat people, how you react in tough situations, because you're a resource. And also be cognizant of the resources that you have. If you have money, be generous. Give to those in need. If you have knowledge, if you have uh, education, be generous. Tutor those who need it. Be a resource to your community. And I think, uh, you know, in, the, in this past year, we're realizing it more than ever, especially as an African-American community, that we are the resource. Not everybody is struggling. Not everybody is downtrodden. Not everybody is, is, is in this community is, is going through something that's keeping them from progressing in life. But there are those of us who have resources and we need to use those resources to pull up those, especially those who look like us, but also those in our community who may not look like us. But you are a resource, and God gave you the resources, your gifts, the money, the connections. He gave you that stuff so that you could also be a resource to your community and to others around you. But that is your identity in Christ, that you are a resource and that you will always have the resources that you need to be successful in your endeavors. The other thing that I want you to understand about your identity is that we are creative. Being a son of the Most High God, the Most High Father, being a daughter of the Most High Father means that creation and creativity is in your identity. If we go back to Genesis chapter 1, Verse 28, it says, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. God has planted plenty of seeds in your mind. Ideas, inventions, uh, new processes. God has planted these seeds and he has given you and us the liberty to act on these seeds. He's given us the liberty to transform the seed into a full-blown fruit that someone can consume. So understand that creativity is in your identity. If your father created the heavens and the earth, and it says that he created us in his image, and we're his children, and we believe that our identity comes from our Father, then you must understand that you are creative. I know a lot of times churches, uh, 
you know, the generation before us that are, that are running churches now are, are feeling like you know, we've run out of ideas and we, and we need the millennials to come in and, and bring us these fresh ideas. Uh, I always like to argue with that point. It's not just the millennials that have the fresh ideas. If you are a son or a daughter of God, then you have the ability to create. It is in you. And I want to challenge everyone in here to act or everyone viewing to act on those seeds that God is planting. I know personally a lot of times I'll have a great idea and I procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate because I don't understand that I have the power. I don't understand that I already have the resources. So that halts me from being creative. And then I flip on the TV and I see, wow, I thought about that idea three years ago. Now someone has a whole company and they're making money off of it because they realized that they had dominion. They realized they had the resources and they allowed that to spur them into, into being creative. So that business that you're running and you feel like, you know, we're losing, we're losing customers and you feel like we're not relevant anymore, you have it in you. You have the creativity in you to turn things around and to make something that will change the world to grow your business. For those of us who aren't business owners, you have the creativeness in you to create something that can both make you money and provide more resources for you and your family, but that could also do what God put you here to do, and that's spread the love of God, and that's help others. You have the creativity in you. Don't let the devil make you think. Don't let the devil make you think that you don't have what it takes to create something in this world. You have what it takes. You are creative. The other thing I want you to understand about your value uh, and I just gave you the point. But the other thing I want you to understand about your identity in our Father is that you are valuable. You are valuable. One thing I want to point out is that God created everything in six days. And on the seventh day, according to the story of Genesis, he rested. But he created the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth. He created the animals. He created the birds. He created uh, the fish in the sea. He created the plants. He even created the heavens. But God didn't stop and rest until he created you. You are that valuable to God that he created everything you see around you. But he didn't stop and he was not satisfied. He created you. So to those who feel like they're not good enough, to those who feel like they don't have what it takes, to those who feel like nothing because of life circumstances or what people have said or people have done to you, I want you to understand, just as the song says, God knows you personally by name, and you have value. God didn't rest until he created you. Therefore, you are important. The other thing I want to point out is we are the only thing that God created in his image. When I first started reading Genesis chapter 1, verse 24, uh, it says God created creatures according to their kinds. Uh, he created the beast of the earth according to their kinds. Uh, he created the livestock according to their kinds. Everything that creeps on the ground according to its ground, according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. But in verse 26, God broke from this pattern of creating everything in its own kind. He says, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. And if you go to verse 27, if you skip down, it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, him. Male and female, he created them. You are of value. We have to understand that he saw something different for humankind, something different from what he saw when he created heaven, something different from what he saw when he created the world and everything in it. He created you in his own image. And just like in the identity of God and the character of God, who is powerful, uh, who has wisdom, who is intelligent, um, a God who is peaceful, a God who is loving, you have those same things because you were created in his image and God thought everything of you to create you just like him. So you got to remember that we are his creation. What I also want to talk about when it comes to our identity 
and us being of value to God is that although we may have consistently turned our backs on God, although we may have consistently gotten rid of his identity for us and started walking in our own identity, although we started sinning against God, he always finds a way to reconcile back to us. If you think about the timeline of Genesis in the first, the first book of the Bible, uh, you think about how God created Adam and Eve in his own image, and they sinned because they adopted their own identity. But then God still allowed them to have children. And we get to eventually Noah uh, and his family, where God spared them, but he created a flood to wipe out everybody else on the earth because they had adopted their own identity and no longer were walking in the identity of Christ. But God reconciled. He, he, he chose a family. He chose Noah to start over that relationship with humankind because he loves you just that much. You're, we're that much of value to God that although there were some consequences, although uh, he had to discipline the earth and, and really get rid of uh, the sin in the world by wiping out people, he still reconciled and said, you know what, but I still love humankind. They're still my children. So I want to allow humans to, to reproduce and recreate through the family of Noah. And if you keep going down the timeline, uh, there was some more disciplinary actions that God took against humankind because we adopted our own identity and didn't keep his identity. But God still said, you know what, I'm going to choose a man named Abraham, and I'm going to show the world that through Abraham and through the way that I bless him and his family, that we all, through the identity of Christ, can function as one and can live and, and can prosper and can grow. So there are all these stories in the Bible, Adam and Eve, no, the, when it gets to Noah, when it gets to Abraham, of humankind turning away from God, but him always coming back and standing with his arms open wide as our father to let us know that he loves us, to let us know that although we sin, he forgives us. So if there's anything that, that you've done or, or are a part of or are doing now, that you believe separates you from God, I just want you to know that you're of that much value, that someone with such magnitude and such power and such esteem is still waiting for you and is still there to accept you with open arms. Whether you sinned last night or you sinned five seconds ago, God is your father. And because he's your father, you have value. And God wants you. God wants to protect you. He wants to provide for you. He has some great things that he wants you to accomplish, and he wants to get you to those things in your life. But don't allow this lie that because I've sinned, I'm no longer of value. No, you are of value. And God has shown that consistently throughout the book of Genesis and throughout the Bible. You possess the dominion and power to bring change to the world and to your life. You possess the resources to bring change to the world. You are, are valuable enough that God created you in his own image, and God didn't rest until he found a way to create mankind, and God didn't give up on you. God is never turning his back on us, never, because he values you that much, and that is your identity in Christ, and also, you're creative. That is your identity, and if you don't know the Father, I encourage you, I encourage you to pick up the word and to start reading in Genesis about who your father is. I encourage you to wherever you are right now in the room to say, God, I know of you, and I know you're standing there waiting on me. God, I want to accept you as Lord and Savior of my life, and I want to accept you into my heart. God, I want to get rid of the things that are keeping me from having the identity of you. I want to get over the selfishness. I want to get over doing things my way, and I want to do things your way because I trust and believe that you are the Father and that you've given us everything we need to succeed. If you have an honest moment wherever you are and you say those things to God, then I would say to you that you have found your identity, and now it is your duty to continue learning about your identity, who you are, not who the world says you are, not who uh, the system or the government says you are, not who the media paints you to be, not who people around you in the community say you are. You have dominion and power and the resources, enough value and creativity to write who you are in society, to depict who you are, to be who you want to be. 
but it starts with knowing who your father is. Join me in a word of prayer. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for what you said through me today. And I'm thankful, God, that you are our father. And that no matter the identity we may have right now, you are always open to share who we really are. You are always open to restore our identities in you. God, I just pray that everyone under the sound of my voice and everyone that watches this, uh, that is watching this live stream, I pray that you would touch them. Keep us, God. Bless us with strength. Bless us with peace. God, allow us to tap into the resources that you've given to us. Allow us to tap into the dominion and power that you've given to us. I come against God, depression, and I come against anxiety. I come against identity crisis and not knowing who we are. I bind those things in the name of Jesus, God, and I bind the things that are trying to paint pictures of who they think we are. God, your word says who we are, that we are a peculiar people, a strong and mighty people, that we are a chosen people, that we are your children and you are our father. So we're thankful for the provision, God, that you provided thus far. We're thankful for the blessings that you've given us. We're thankful for taking care of us. Um, although we may have gone through things in life, we're thankful that we're still here today and that we can learn from those things, God. And I just pray that as we move forward, that systems will begin to change, that hearts will begin to change, that people will begin to come together even more so than we are now. And that we will continue to consistently, God, grow in love and grow in peace with one another. We count all these things done in your name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, I do want to quickly give you the information if you want to uh, sow into this ministry or donate. But we have three ways to give. One way is you can write a check to Message of Hope Ministries. Uh, and if you go to our website, www.mohraleigh.org slash donate. The P.O. Box address that you can send the check to is up there. Um, also, if you want to give online, again, mohraleigh.org slash donate is the second way to give. And the third way to give is you can text the word give to the number 828-705-3273. I thank you, uh, and, and the church thanks you for all of the giving thus far. Um, we thank you for your sacrifice. We know that these are trying times, and uh, the economy isn't as stable as we would like it to be. Uh, but God will honor your sacrifice. God will honor your commitment to continue sowing into his kingdom. When you give and donate to Message of Hope Ministries, you're not giving to four walls. You're not giving to a building. You're not giving to a person but you're giving to a kingdom uh, whose purpose is to spread love and hope and joy in the world and to spread the good news that God is your father and that in your identity in God, you can accomplish and do anything you want to do. So we thankful for, uh, we're thankful for your giving thus far. I'm going to pray, and uh, I think I have one more announcement uh, after I pray. And then um, we will conclude. But God, we thank you for all the seeds that have been sown. We thank you for all the generous and sacrificial giving. I pray that you would touch all those who gave, God, and make it so that by next week they could give even more because of job increase or resource increases, God, or just faith increases. We pray for those who didn't have the means to give that by next week, God, they will be able to give. Uh, and we just pray that you would touch the minds, the hearts, and the bodies, and souls of everybody who gave and who wanted to give, God. Just give us peace. Give us strength to continue moving forward. And all these things we pray in your name. Amen. Uh, before the last thing I want to mention is that uh, we will be uh, continuing our summer enrichment program, which we do every year. Uh, this will be sponsored by Project Hope Community, which is our 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, we will offer tutoring services, math and reading, to students aging between the ages of 7 and 17 years old. Uh, we will begin virtual summer enrichment and tutoring on July 11th, 2020. If you want to sign your child up for this amazing experience, please visit 
projecthopecommunity.org. Again, that is the Summer Enrichment Program. We thank you all for tuning in to our live stream. We uh, hope you have a wonderful and blessed Father's Day and an excellent week. And we will see you again next week at 1030 a.m. God bless.